Here are the sponsors for the video tour. Our diamond sponsors include Farm Credit Canada, Van Buchan Farms, Van Breek Farm Nursery. Gold sponsors include BSF, NM Bartlett, the Nova Scotia Crop and Livestock Insurance Commission, Paul Lanahan and RBC Dominion Securities, Scotian Gold, Truro Argomart, and V Cross Nurseries. Our silver sponsors include Bear Crop Science, Bishop and Company, Corteva, AgriScience, Grindstone Creek Nursery, and Nova International Equipment. And our bronze sponsors include Cavendish Agri-Services, Eastern Drainage, Evans Manufacturing Company, Nova Scotia Farm Loan Board, Perennia, Provide Agro, TD Agriculture, Upper Canada Growers. And we also have a general sponsor, Adams County Nurseries. Now we're just going up the hill at the Kenfield Research and Development Center. And here we're going to see Dr. Suzanne Blatt uh, talk about some rootstock trials. First we'll look at Modi and then Buckeye Gala. Welcome to the Modi trial. Let's go find Susie. Hi, I'm Susie Blatt. I'm an entomologist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. What are the NC140 trials? So the NC140 trials are a series of tree fruit plantings and these can be, they don't have to be apples. We have, there's pear, there's cherry, there's peach and plum and they are developed by a group of university researchers, government scientists or state extension officers and the purpose is to explore how rootstocks perform across North America. So the rootstocks themselves come from breeding programs in the United States, Europe and the UK and the people who are actually doing the plantings they can come from any state in the US there are a couple locations in in Mexico and there's three locations in Canada what are some characteristics of the Modi variety the Modi variety this so that apple was developed in Italy and it's a scab resistant one um, it was initially developed for black spot resistance and what captured my attention with it was how it scored in a local uh, sensory evaluation. So the cultivar evaluation trial, which was developed by the, the NSFGA some years ago, Modi was one of those varieties that was brought in for evaluation. And for a scab resistant variety, it scored really well in the sensory panel and that's quite unusual. Most of the time, if you've selected to be scab resistant, the, the, either the texture is cardboardy or the flavor is flat and it just doesn't have what you come to associate with a with a beautiful apple but the modi is a little bit different because it's it checks a lot of good boxes so my hope is that this is a variety that could be put into our region and it will provide great taste and um and be done with reduced inputs it's got a beautiful deep red color and it stores really really well is the planting being managed or organically then um, the original intention of the trial was to be an organic one. Um, however, the problem with us is that the plant material came from a nursery in the U.S. which was not virus uh, free certified. In order to get the trees here in Canada, we had to go through CFIA and put them under a Section 43 import permit for research purposes. And, they're, and now they're being managed with a pest control plan. And what that means is that we have to manage them conventionally to ensure that any disease or pest that the trees may have brought with them into the country will not infect other trees. Can you explain the Modi trial then? Sure. So the Modi, as we talked earlier, the, the trees were received in August of 2015. They were in very poor shape. Um, and so we decided to put them in pots for the winter. And that meant that they ended up being planted out in May of 2016. So with respect to the rest of the other plantings, um, they are one year behind. We did get their first crop in 2017 and they're going into that fourth crop in 2020. We're measuring um, very basic things. Um, we're looking at the cross-sectional area, we're looking at root suckers, and we're looking at yield. And in total, there's 12 replicates, each single tree replicates of 10 different rootstocks. And so these are a lot of the, these mostly came out of the Geneva breeding program out of Cornell, um, with the exception of the M9. And that's kind of, that was determined to be the industry comparative. So the first thing that I wanted to look at was the percent change in how they grew. So what this is looking at is the, the cross-sectional area 
from say 2016 and then I compared it with 2017. So that first blue bar there is showing the amount of growth they did from the time we put them in the ground um, from the pots into that first year. So they really took off and put on some size. And then over and then by in 2018 and 2019, they basically, in some cases, you know, they did another 50% growth. Um, if you look at the G935, did that in 2019, whereas some others stayed around 20 to 30% of whatever you know diameter they had going on. So next, Susie is going to show us the rootstocks in order of smallest to largest change in trunk cross-sectional area. G202, G935, M9T337, G41, G11, G969, G214, G30, G890, and G222. Um, the root suckers, we definitely have some uh, differences there showing up, and it seems to go a little bit with vigor. Um, G890 is one of the more vigorous rootstocks in the planting, and it's, it's filled in the space, it's got a lot of branches, it's got a lot of leaf material. And it's also with that comes cumulative, a lot of root suckers. Also, G202 and G222 had a high number of cumulative root suckers. Uh, on the other end, you've got your, you've got your M9 showing very few, and also showing very few in G41. Now, G41 is also one of our smaller trees within the trial itself. We've got cumulative yield. We've had uh, yields for three years. So this is the amount of kilograms that we've pulled off of them. And again, if you look at, you've got G890 producing a lot of fruit, as is uh, 935. And down at the other end, you've got your 222. So 222, if you can quickly remember from the previous slide, had a lot of root suckers. And here, which sort of suggests that it's got some vigor, but yet in terms of its yield, eh, not doing so well. Um, crop efficiency, so this is where we look at and the amount of fruit produced in kilograms per that cross-sectional area. And in 2017, some of those trees were kind of slow to get going. G890, which would spend a lot of time putting out, uh, putting out um, vegetative matter more so than, than fruit in 2017. 969 did uh, some reasonable had a reasonable crop in 2017, but as we moved into 2018 and 2019, we're starting to see that crop efficiency go up and stay up for some of those root stocks. Like your M9 is over one now, uh, 935 is over one, 214, 969, and 890. Even though it's a very vigorous tree, it does not sustain, you know, the comparative amount of fruit that you would expect it to given how much um, plant material is actually there. And I created a little summary over here so that the idea of, um, I basically was looking at what are the top five in these kind of categories. So this is within, you know, your fourth year, you know, we're going into fourth leaf and this is where these trees are at right now. So as we move into the rest of the trial, we'll see if some of their placements, their placements shift. In terms of which rootstocks are showing, you know, some promise in these categories, I mean, 969 showed up in the top five for all four of these. 890 only dinged two of those categories, as did 935 or 214. Well, 214 actually hit three because it hit quick to establish as well. So when will the Modi trial end? Typically, those trials are 10 years in length. But in recent years, we've been having the discussion um, because there's much more rapid turnover with the newer rootstocks. So like the 2010 Honeycrisp trial, that one was supposed to be a 10 year, but ended after seven. So we're expecting that this one is going to only have, so I mean, I'm in fourth leaf, so it'll have another three crops after this. So the, the crop of 2023 will probably be the last one for that trial. And it's largely because if we don't know what those trees are doing by year five, it's not going to be, you know, suitable for our, our new plantings anyway. Okay, thank you. Let's follow Susie to the next rootstock trial. 
We're at Wolgamith Farms now, and we're going to go find Dr. Suzanne Blatt. She's doing an on-farm rootstock trial here. Welcome to the Buckeye Gala trial. What are some characteristics of Buckeye Gala? It was discovered as a limb mutation. It's another full red apple, much like the Modi, but it's got a little bit of a, it's got a fine red stripe to it. Uh, the color will go 100% red, even if it's in full shade. So that's going to be an appealing trait. Um, it colors early and completely. The one downside is it does suffer from that same fire blight sensitivity that other galas do. So these characters arrived in um, May of 2019. They're being hosted on Wolgamoth Farms over in Aylesford. The setup for this trial is a little bit different from the Modi. The decision was made to go with five replicates, eight rootstocks, and instead of being single tree replicates, they're planted in groups of three, and the middle tree is the experimental unit. And one thing about the NC140 meetings is how to plant an experimental trial is, a, is an hour long or two conversation at every meeting that we have. So you'll see sort of that variation coming out in, in how these trees are planted. The uh, rootstocks that we have in this one, so we've got uh, a B10, uh, G11, G41, 935, 969 4814 making an appearance and that was one that showed up in the Honeycrisp NC140. IFO number two is a new one and then we've got the two M9 and M26 as the industry standard or comparatives. In terms of what we're measuring for these guys we're looking at the, again very basic information so we're looking at cross-sectional area um, whether or not they've got root suckers and how many and then some information on their yield. So these, as they've only been in the ground, all we really have to date is a little bit of sort of their change in growth from one year to the next. And, and so we measured them when they first went into the ground in May, and then we measured them at the end of the season in November. So that's that 2019. And then I went out in early 2020 and I was able to get some new measurements. So that's comparing what they were in May of 2020 compared with uh, November of 2019. And so you can get a, a pretty good sense of how they are you know, filling in in terms of vigor. And in this instance, um, 4814, which was a bit of a dog uh, when we put it with Honeycrisp, is doing really quite well when you've got this Buckeye Gala sitting on top of it. Um, 969, which was nice and steady over in the Modi, is also showing um, pretty good uh, growth here um, with the Buckeye Gala. Um, 935 is doing a bit of an interesting thing where they were just kind of slow, but then they took a nice leap. And so they're really filling in their space as is uh, G11. And one th piece of data that we were asked to collect from this trial was the number of fruit clusters per tree. These trees will have their first crop this year, we were asked to leave a crop on them as opposed to taking everything off. Last year they had no crop, but this year we are cropping them very lightly um, is the recommendation. And, but one thing they wanted us to do when we, when we went out was to look at the average number of fruit clusters per tree. And so that's what that second graph is, is showing. And you can see which ones are very precocious in terms of how many fruit clusters they're putting out. So B10, M26 are just top of the charts with um, you know, almost 40, 40 fruit clusters on these young trees. 969 is in there with 20 odd. Um, that IFO, which is very new to me, I don't know much about that particular rootstock, um, but it's being very modest in its approach to um, putting out fruit this year. Um, G41, 935 coming out kind of where we expect them to based on what we've seen from them with Honeycrisp on top and again with uh, the Modi. She also mentioned tree mortality. Three of the G935 died and others that are looking poor include one G11, two IFO number two, one G4814, and one G41. 
So when will the trial end with the Buckeye Gala? So this trial has potential to go until 2026. At about the third leaf, we're going to be recording tree height as an additional factor, but outside of you know the basic things of the, the cross-sectional area yield and the root suckering, that's the main information that's going to be collected. As we, you know, as we get in there this year, we've not been able to spend a lot of time with the trees as we would like, but I mean, I will always do my best to put an insect slant and see which ones show up with more aphids or more uh, European sawfly. So there is more data to come uh, with our Buckeye Galas.